Good afternoon. Uh, I look forward to meeting the EU defense ministers. Uh, NATO EU cooperation has uh, been close to my heart uh, for many, many years, and we are making a lot of progress. Um, the war in Ukraine demonstrates the importance of uh, NATO and the European working closely together, and uh, uh, NATO allies and uh, the EU has uh, delivered unprecedented support to Ukraine. Uh, just over the last months, uh, we have uh, delivered heavy battle tanks, uh, the Leopards, uh, the, the UK-British uh, uh, Challengers, uh, but also now the US Abrahams. And then uh, the, uh, the last weeks, the United Kingdom has delivered uh, advanced uh, long-range uh, cruise missiles, uh, which are already making a difference uh, on the battlefield. And then, of course, over the last days, we have heard an announcement from uh, several allies, including the United States, the United Kingdom, and, and several European allies, uh, that uh, they will start the training of uh, pilots uh, on uh, NATO standard uh, modern uh, Western uh, uh, fighter jets. Um, this uh, demonstrates our readiness to stand by Ukraine and, uh, and to be prepared for the long uh, haul. Uh, but, of course, to continue our support to Ukraine, we also need to ramp up production uh, of weapons and of, uh, of ammunition. Uh, and therefore, one of the issues I will discuss with the defense ministers um, is how we can work uh, even more closely together, uh, NATO and the European Union, on uh, increasing and strengthening our uh, transatlantic uh, uh, industrial base. Um, I welcome the work the EU is uh, doing. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, 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 making a, a difference, it's, it's helping our joint efforts. Um, uh, at the same time, what NATO does uh, is also critical because um, uh, we are setting the standards uh, to ensure interoperability, interchangeability. Um, we have the NATO guidelines, the capability targets for each and every uh, ally, uh, and we are now in the process of revising the guidelines, the capability targets for uh, battle decisive ammunition, which includes also 155 ammunition, which is a critical uh, piece of ammunition in the war uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and, um, and we are engaging closely with industry. Uh, I met them several times. We have, we have engaged with them. And I see now that more and more NATO allies are actually signing contracts, which is what we need to ensure that uh, production actually increases. We need to avoid creating new barriers between uh, uh, NATO allies. We need to strengthen the, the transatlantic industrial base to ensure that we can both replenish our own stocks to ensure our own deterrence and defense, but also to continue uh, to support uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, then another topic uh, which was also related to the war in Ukraine is the protection of uh, critical infrastructure. Um, uh, we have seen uh, the vulnerability of uh, infrastructure, uh, especially undersea infrastructure. Um, we have established a, a joint task force uh, with the European Union, NATO, uh, and the European Union on critical on, on resilience, including infrastructure. NATO has established a cell uh, at NATO to coordinate efforts of, of different countries, different allies, and the public and the private sector uh, to step up what we do to protect the critical uh, infrastructure. And I expect also new announcements and decisions at the upcoming uh, uh, NATO uh, summit. So then I'm ready for your questions. Uh, Secretary General, could I just ask on ammunition, which you, which you mentioned there, um, are both the European Union and NATO allies doing everything possible to get enough ammunition to Ukraine in the time frame that Ukraine needs it? Are you confident about the EU three-track approach? Is there anything more you will be encouraging them to do today? It is extremely important that we increase uh, the production of ammunition. This is something we have been focused on for uh, some time now, since last fall we had the first meetings at, the, at NATO. I also met with, uh, for, uh, with Minister Koleba and, uh, uh, and High Representative Borrell uh, and, uh, and me. We met at the, uh, some months ago and agreed also to coordinate our efforts between Ukraine, EU and NATO even more, uh, more uh, closely. Um, uh, because uh, it is always, of course, important to discuss new platforms, planes, battle tanks, uh, air defense systems, but as important, or perhaps even more important, uh, uh, is it to ensure that all the systems which are already in Ukraine 
work and function as they should. And to do so, they need uh, uh, ammunition, they need fuel, spare parts, maintenance, uh, and repair capacity. Uh, so, so the sustainment, which also then includes ammunition, uh, is absolutely critical. This is now a war of attrition, and the war of attrition becomes a battle of logistics, and then uh, production, uh, uh, ramp up production is absolutely key. Uh, so, of course, we are always focusing on what more can we do uh, to ensure uh, that we engage uh, even more with industry, that we mobilize even more contracts. Uh, we have, um, uh, I, I, I have decided to invite um, representatives from the defense industry from both sides of the Atlantic to our um, defense ministerial uh, meeting um, uh, next month. Uh, to an event where we will engage directly with all the ministers uh, and the defense industry. Uh, the EU is, of course, also inv invited. Uh, Ukraine is invited to the same event with, um, with um, uh, uh, High Representative Borrell, but also Commissioner Beton, uh, to ensure the fullest possible engagement uh, uh, with the defense industry. In NATO, of course, we have tried and tested structures for uh, uh, production and for also joint procurement. Uh, we have done joint procurement, uh, meaning allies uh, buying ammunition and weapons together for many, many years. Um, uh, we have uh, big ongoing projects. Some of them are organized by NATO allies as groups. Many of them are organized uh, through the NATO Support and Procurement Agency, the NSBA, and there are ongoing projects now. Uh, and I, uh, I, I think, of course, it's important to use all the tools available, including the well-established uh, 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 NATO uh, structures to uh, coordinate and to uh, ensure joint procurement and, and, and to sign the contract so uh, the industry is willing to invest and, and ramp up production. I think it's a good idea, and I welcome the decision by several NATO allies, including Germany, uh, to uh, start training of pilots, because that gives us the opportunity, the possibility the, uh, to make decisions on also delivery uh, later on. Um, uh, I will leave it to individual allies to make announcement exactly about when they start training. But of course, also with the announcement by President Biden uh, this weekend, uh, uh, the U.S. being, of course, the main provider of, for instance, F-16s, uh, and also announcing clearly that they will start training. Uh, this is this is an important step uh, that partly uh, will enable us to, to then deliver fighter jets uh, uh, at some stage, uh, but also uh, uh, well, is sending a very clear signal that we are there for the long term, uh, and uh, and that Russia cannot wait us out. Uh, and, 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 and President Putin started this war, he can end this war, and we have to remember what this is. This is a war of aggression. Um, Ukraine has the right of self-defense. They are defending themselves, uh, and, and the right of self-defense is enshrined in the UN Charter. Uh, we help Ukraine to uphold that right. That's our right to help them protect UN law, international law, uh, against the war of aggression. Um, that doesn't make NATO and NATO allies party to the conflict, but we are supporting Ukraine to defend themselves uh, against uh, a war of aggression, uh, a brutal uh, invasion by, uh, by President Putin. So you said Germany is training pilots, is that true? No, I also said that Germany are among the countries that have said that they are ready to, to, to look into the issue of, uh, of, uh, of training. If I'm, if I'm misinformed, then I, then I regret that. No, uh, we have the lady over here. Mm. Viktor Orban said in an interview with Bloomberg that looking at the figures, looking at the surroundings, looking at the fact that NATO is not ready to send troops, it is obvious that there is no victory for poor Ukrainians on the battlefield. How would you comment on that? Well, what we have demonstrated now is the willingness of NATO allies to really provide support to Ukraine. And we have seen that this support uh, uh, has been uh, really decisive. Uh, President Putin made uh, several big strategic mistakes when he invaded Ukraine, um, uh, partly because he totally underestimated the Ukrainians, their bravery, their, their, their determination, their, their, their courage, uh, but also he totally underestimated NATO allies and partners when it comes to our willingness, our readiness to provide support to Ukraine. 
and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this has enabled the Ukrainians uh, to, uh, to, to push back and to retake territory. We saw it uh, in the north uh, uh, around Kiev, uh, where they actually liberated a lot of territory. Then we saw it in the east and around Kharkiv, and then we saw it in the south, again, Kherson. So the Ukrainians have already demonstrated the capability they have uh, to liberate land, to push back the, the, the Russians, and the importance of uh, the support they get from uh, NATO uh, allies. Uh, then, uh, uh, of course, they need to do more, and that's exactly why uh, we are stepping up our support. I just mentioned the battle tanks, the, the, uh, the long-range cruise missiles, and now also training of uh, pilots. And let me come back to exactly which nations which are training pilots, but, but anyway, uh, several allies have announced that they are training pilots. Um, uh, uh, so I'm absolutely confident that Ukraine has the capacity, the will, the courage, but also NATO allies have the, have the, have the commitment, the resolve to support them so they can uh, liberate uh, and, and ensure that, uh, that President Putin does not win this war. Thank you very much, colleagues. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you.